Green Sky Patient Solutions helps dental providers grow their business while helping their patients get the optimal care that they need. By offering revolving credit and installment loan platforms, Green Sky can meet your financing needs. So I'm going to get started, everyone. Um, there are 22 participants in the room. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, tonight's webinar is about owning multiple practices, and we are thankful to our sponsor tonight, which is Green Sky Patient Solutions, and Green Sky offers third-party financing to our patients, especially for larger cases. And so if you have not checked out Green Sky, please do. Um, I would love for all the doctors to um, go around and introduce themselves. And I know that we're all familiar with each other just from the Facebook group. But if we can start, let's see, where should we start? Let's start with Dr. Misty and then um, go clockwise around your screen. Uh, or I'll just name whoever should go next. But Dr. Misty, if you want to kick off, that'd be great. Sure, thanks. Um, good, good evening, ladies. Um, I am actually on vacation this week with my husband. We have a week off um, from work. But I live in Marshall, Texas, and I bought, I started working in 2003. Um, and bought into that practice in 2006. I brought out um, the senior partner and joined in with my partner. The senior, the, the dentist that started the practice is still there practicing um, and do, he does dentures and a little bit of general dentistry. And then it's my partner and I that we do fee for service, all ages. And then in 2011, there was nobody in our town of 25,000 that accepted Medicaid, and we started a uh, primarily a Medicaid, pediatric Medicaid office. Um, and it, we opened it up right across the street from our original office, and we started with three operatories, um, one hygienist and a temporary dentist that did a long-term temp contract until we could find somebody more permanent. And in 2000, I think, Probably 16, we moved, lo moved that location to a bigger building, and we have um, four operatories now, five operatories now. So that's what, that's me. Thank you. I work um, Monday and Wednesday all day, and Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, half days. And I work primarily at the, the fee-for-service practice and just fill in as needed um, at, the, at our other practice. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, Dr. Janice? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Janice Leal. I uh, practice mainly in Dublin, California, which is in the East Bay Area. And that is my mothership office. And my other two practices are in Tracy, California, which is about 20 minutes east. And my third practice is in Stockton, California, which is about 45 minutes east of where I live in Dublin. Um, I uh, started or I bought my um, mothership practice in Dublin in 2003 um, and I grew it and my husband who is a dentist also uh, joined the practice and when I couldn't take it anymore working with him at the same time we looked for something else and I was going to do a startup um, but my um, employer who was my first employer um, out of school, passed away suddenly, and uh, we took over his two practices, and that's where I am now. Um, as far as when I work there, um, I work four days a week. I work two days in Dublin, and I work one day each in the other two practices. And my husband does the same thing, except he teaches one day a week. Fantastic. Very cool. Um, awesome story. Dr. Priya? Hi, everyone. Um, Priya Bonpali. I am in the north and northwest suburbs of um, Chicago, so not too far away from, from Dr. Yum. In fact, we refer to her. Um, so we've got uh, each practice is roughly around 15 to 20 minutes away from each other, about um, I want to say about 19 aerial miles or so, which is a comfortable and kind of it works as a distance um, in this area because all the suburbs of Chicago, I don't know if you know much about it, but are very kind of stacked and close to each other. Um, we've got associates, uh, five total 
um, one periodontist and four general dentists. And uh, the three locations basically run on one primary doctor and then a secondary doctor will go there as well. I have um, four clinical days that I work right now. So it's really three, so one in each office, and then I, um, I keep that fourth day as needed for certain, you know, certain cases, or, you know, if I've got to go somewhere else and do some work, like, you know, we've got all on fours kind of a little bit more regularly now. And um, so I end up going to my oral surgeon's office a lot. So I end up leaving a day open. So I am able to go to all three offices as needed. Um, the first private practice that I started was a complete like startup, zero patients, uh, complete happenstance. We were just driving past it and actually saw a sign on the window, believe it or not. Um, I don't know that anyone really does that anymore, but that, that was our story. And um, it took about two years to, to grow that practice. And it was a very small town, just kind of a commuter town in between a few bigger suburbs. And uh, that practice grew pretty quickly in about two years. And then um, through, again, just kind of a random connection with a broker, found another practice that was um, in need of a dentist to sort of come in and take over because the dentist was either retiring or needed to um, step back from dentistry in a in a quick way and um, oftentimes in the in the suburbs it's not very easy as a newer dentist to to get into a practice without hanging up shingles and that's not something that I was ready to do in my um, phase of career so so it was mostly take over work with what you have and then kind of build it up from there and then location number three just turned one about a uh, less than a month ago. And we, um, we have uh, primarily associates working there. I would like to work there more because it's a mile away from my house. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, eventually I'll, I'm sure I'll be able to spend more time wherever I like, but right now we're sort of in, in growth phase. So. Awesome, thank you. And then Dr. Megan. Hi, so I'm Megan. Um, I live in small town, Iowa, Williamsburg. It's a town of about 3,000 people. Um, I graduated dental school in 2018, so I'm pretty fresh, and I bought my practice right out of school. Um, I didn't anticipate owning multiple practices, but it was kind of the circumstances of the particular practice I wanted to buy that it was a two-for-one deal. So I said, why the heck not? Let's just, let's just try it out. Um, right, so the soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, why, why not? You know, if one's great, two's better. Um, so those uh, practices are 30 miles apart from each other, which equates to 30 minutes. So it's a nice commutable distance. Um, one's in my hometown where I live, Williamsburg. Um, like I said, population 3,000. The other's in um, a smaller town, 2,000 is the population, but we're the only dentist in the county. So we're the only dentist of 16,000 people. So pretty good. Um, I'm the sole owner. I have an associate that just started um, in July. Um, so I went down to three days a week clinically, and then I just do a lot of business stuff. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing, everybody. Um, I just thought that, like, since we all um, – Made introductions. I'll just briefly introduce myself for the participants that are uh, or attendees that are in the room. Um, I am a pediatric dentist also here in Chicago uh, near Priya and I started my um, flagship location in the city kind of close to Wrigleyville where the Cubs are. Uh, that was in 2009 um, startup <laughs> scratch practice and then the second one um, will be five years old actually this month, and that's in the suburbs where I grew up, which is closer to Priya, and also start up from scratch. And so, um, yeah, I, I love being a practice owner. Um, I never thought that I would have two, but here I am. And it's not easy by any means, but um, so far so good. So on that note, I thought that if anybody has 
questions for the panel. If anybody would like to ask, um, we could start with questions from the group, or we can go off of questions that we have, that I that we have created. So um, if anyone wants to ask questions, feel free. And if not, I'll just start with some of our own questions. Okay, so I don't see anybody typing anything. So I'm gonna go off of our list that we created that we went over before. Um, I mean, one thing I thought would be interesting would be to ask the question, how do you juggle your work schedule? Anyone wanna take that one? Um, I'll take that one. Um, I definitely not without help, uh, for sure. I think it's so important to have a support system around me. I, um, I have a super supportive husband who I use and abuse regularly when it comes to the business aspect of things. And he's not in dentistry. So, um, you know, we, he stays in his lane. I stay in my lane when it comes to that. So, um, but I mean, I think he, he's very critical to, to me. I don't know that if he wasn't supportive as, as a young mother, I mean, I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old. I don't know that I would be able to do that if he wasn't able to, you know, just pick up where, we, where I leave off on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, uh, we have a, an amazing nanny who is more like a personal assistant because both my kids are in school now. And so school or daycare. And so I've I found very lucrative ways to make sure that she's busy at all times, um, including training her to send claims in the office, um, trained her to make post-op phone calls for me. Um, she's even, you know, done some like really concierge type of stuff and dropped off, you know, um, a water pick at somebody's house that they had purchased and hadn't picked up and uh you know it's just little things like that but it's like really personalized as personalized as we can get and she gets it and um that's so uh that's such a big reason why I feel like all of this works is because I have I have um a strong support system around me Awesome. Um, anybody else want to share how they juggle their work schedule? Uh, I'd second having help with um, Dr. Priya. This year was kind of a big year for me. It's the first year that I have not had extra help. Um, I have five children. My oldest is 14. I have a set of twins that are nine, nine year old boys, and then a surprise set of twins that were a boy girl, and they are eight. And um, I, my mother lives very close to me and she helped me, you know, a tremendous amount. And then I also would have a nanny um, and or college students that we have um, two colleges in our town. And so it's if you've got a college in your town, find you a great college student that, that can help. Because as the kids got older, I you know, didn't need as much help when they would start preschool and now into school. Um, but it's, you know. I see so many people always posting like, should I get a nanny? I can't do it all. Get a nanny and get the help. You know, I would send mine grocery shopping and I could spend time with my kids. Um, and they spent less money than me at the grocery store because they only bought what I put on the list. Um, and so it's just, you, you've got to have extra help when you're trying to run multiple practices and be a good mom. Um, and it, I really like fretted over not having help this year, but the kids are old enough now that, um, I also went through a divorce during that time. That was really hard. Um, and, and remarried a really great man that helps out a lot. Um, so get the help. Misty, you're you are super. super. Yeah. Misty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We. Wow. Um, I just wanted to say that Mindy. Hi, Mindy. Um, I got an opportunity, Mindy, she's awesome. She just typed, my brother and I own two practices. One is in a town of 4,000 and the other in an area of 400,000. We want an associate. Our practices are in Iowa and Illinois. Where do you guys find your best associates? That's the first question. Um, I found mine. I have two really good friends, actually three that teach at the University of Iowa, which is 
um, were like 30 minutes from the University of Iowa. So I just had them scope out the best fourth year dental students <laughs> and plug my name in. I've always used a company called AJ Riggins. Um, we're two and a half hours from Dallas and about four hours from Houston and we're in a rural area and it's, that's, a, that's our hardest um, our biggest problem is trying to keep a dentist. Um, if we can keep, you know, a dentist for two years, that's fantastic. Um, and so we always have to to outsource to a to a company to find them for us. Well, I have three associates that are all mommy dentists in business. So I will say thank you so much to the group in general for helping with that because. Um, yes. I, I found two associates that way. And the third one just happened to be an MDeb and I, I interviewed her and it worked out. Um, but the local dental boards are really helpful. Um, you know, when you have relationships with brokers and like local dentists and study clubs and things like that, I use my local resources as much as, much as possible because I think nothing says a great um, recommendation other than your peers. I mean, when I when I have somebody in the study club that says, oh, I have a great associate dentist, really reliable, really, you know, great clinician, et cetera, et cetera. These are the things that I value over a previous employer's recommendation. So. Yeah, I don't have any associates. I couldn't give you advice. Well, I do have an associate. He's my husband. You got to marry one of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually uh, think personal referral, you know, like someone who knows of someone, I think that works for me too. Um, Mindy then asked, what should we look for? And is it harder to find an associate if you don't want them to buy in? Um, in today's market, I, I don't know that everybody really wants to buy in. That's what I find um, in our area Anyway, I, I feel that there are more uh, associate dentists out there than there are people that are willing to do private practice right now. Um, I think more than, than wanting somebody that doesn't want to buy in, I think I have to compete with, you know, the Aspens and all the corporates out there as far as what they're offering as daily minimums or whatever benefits that they offer. Those, those, um, numbers to compete compete with are pretty pretty difficult so hopefully you create a wonderful enough working environment and a camaraderie amongst you that they stop caring about the daily minimum um, i have no issues with uh, hiring new grads or anything like that i would absolutely do it but i feel like newer grads have higher debt these days and so they're you know it comes down to the bottom line like if i graduated recently and i had um $700,000 in debt, I'd be like, get me a daily minimum. I need it, you know? So I don't um, fault that in any way, but I tend to lean the other way just because I think they're a little less hungry and more looking for um, the quality in dentistry. Generalized statement, not always true. <laughs> <laughs> We've not, I've not had a problem with people wanting to buy in. Um, our first long-term dentist that worked for us for a couple of years, he came, he wanted to leave the big city and come to a smaller town and really just kind of focus on inner growth and wanted less distractions. And so we just, you know, we're lucky to have him, um, knowing that he would always go back to the Dallas area. Um, our second one, um, she wanted to start her family and, you know, not work. Um, and so now we're have a new, a relatively new grad. Um, but they've, we've not had a problem with them want to buy in. We do offer, um, I feel like a pretty good daily minimum and we don't have a, a minimum production. Um, we try to make it as stress free as possible. Um, just so that they can come and work and have a place to learn and, uh, not have the burden of running a practice. Misty, yeah. do you worry about, um, maybe taking a loss on that associate because you don't have that daily minimum? Or how do you it for it? Minimum. 
Janice, uh, can, you, can you repeat oh. that? Yeah, I mean, Miss, did you, because you don't have that um, production minimum for them, do you worry, I mean, because they have a daily minimum, do you ever worry about, you know, them taking a loss? Or you, I'm sorry, you taking a loss? No, we've never taken a loss. They, they quite frankly, don't make their minimum most days, but um, our hygiene stays so busy that it just, it, it works. I mean, for, to answer also Mindy's questions about where to find associates and, and about buy-in, I have um, about, I have like seven associates and um, two of them are full-time faculty at the dental school. And they often get one day a week off and they can work in private practice and they can also work on weekends. And so um, two of mine are full-time faculty and they don't want to buy in and they're actually very good associates because they have all the like up-to-date knowledge of what's going on at the dental schools, what's being taught, all the research, all the clinical. Um, and then if I need an associate, they also can comb through the school, kind of like what Megan's friends do. Um, so I find that um, having academic people also in, in the private practice works out really well. Um, Mindy asked what pay structure, you know, as far as pay structure of associates, what's worked best for you guys? We offer 35% thir um, of uh, collections um, for, for the first year. And then as long as there's, you know, they're, they're pretty competitive and everything is going well, then we'll bump that up to 40% to offset not having a daily minimum. Uh, we offer 35% of collections as well. Uh, we, we have a daily minimum for our associate. It's not anything spectacular by any means. Um, but we, um, if she outcompetes her base of, um, and she can do 33%, but she doesn't pay lab fees. She gets a pretty generous CE stipend and all that. Yeah, I think it's also competitive to what your area, mm -hmm. you know, what is going on in your area, you know, because I think that even in East Coast versus West Coast versus Midwest, they often, you know, do different pay structures. Um, Nicole would like to ask, is it financially rewarding to have multiple practices with multiple overheads versus growing one central practice? I don't, know. <laughs> I, I don't know. My, my practice I bought was kind of a dump and I didn't realize it. So I'm dumping money into stuff that keeps breaking down. So ask me in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it is not, you know, there is, um, you know, more overhead, but at the same time, at least in our situation, it's really nice you can share staff, you know, like right now it's cold and flu season, at least here in Iowa. And so a lot of people stay home with their kids. A lot of our staff do. So we're able to share staff, which is nice. I'd rather be on the side of overstaffed rather than understaffed, um, at least personally. That's what I like. Um, and some of the, you know, maybe this is just reps telling me this, but they give us a little bit of a deal for having, you know, multiple locations, buying multiple of things or, you know, more in bulk. So, you know, you have to watch it a little bit closer, I feel, but I think you can still have a good, good profit if you watch your overhead like anything else. So, yeah, I mean, I think definitely overhead is always going to be a concern when you have two rents to worry about, two sets of staff, but like um, Dr. Megan said, I've never really had an issue where I'm having to, you know, now pay a temp company or a temp agency to get a last minute assistant who may or may not break my brand new sensor or whatever. Um, I have people that I trust that we can sort of pull from in a um, immediate circle. And um, absolutely there, there are, I mean, there's high overheads in dentistry in general, but I mean, that's kind of what, you know, business ownership is about. It's about bringing that overhead number down. So I don't know that it really matters if it's multiple practices or a single practice, you're, you're going to be focusing on that exact same um, goal at the end of the day. So, so yes, to answer your question, yes, it is profitable, but I could see how it wouldn't be if it, if, if you weren't mindful 
of a lot of things, especially overhead. I can tell you right now with my other two smaller practices, um, we are not profitable. And it's because those two are only part-time and I'm paying full-time rent for a part-time practice and two of them. And so I am, my goal this year is to grow so I can um, finally hire an associate because um, I think there's certain benchmarks I have to meet before I can give up some of my own production and my, some of my own take home. I'll jump in and add to it that, um, like Jana said, you know, you have to meet certain benchmarks before you add an associate. And I think it depends on your intention and what your other location, plural, um, is for and what you're doing. And um, having my second startup, you know, it took a lot longer to grow than the first one. And I intended it to be an associate run practice. Like I, my intention was never to fully full-time be there. And so it's not as profitable as my flagship where I'm there all the time. Um, but I, you know, I actually built it in thinking that I was going to move out of the city and into the suburbs um, a couple years ago and it still hasn't happened. I'm still in the city, but um you know, it can be profitable, yes, but it really depends on your intention and um, what you have in mind for your other locations. Um, but great questions, guys. So, okay, so nobody has typed in any other questions, so I'm going to go on to another question. Um, what is the hardest part of owning multiple locations? For for myself, it's been when I have had to cover the other office. Um, it's worked out so that my partner and I, um, he, he would work a morning, I would work the afternoon, and then we would just flip-flop and work back at our other office. We have the advantage that our offices are like a quarter mile apart. I mean, it's two totally different demographics, and so it's it's very easy for us to go over there and cover that office if need be. Um, so just trying to cover that and, and work at both offices when that's not the norm for us. The hardest part for me is I can't have my fingers in everything, you know? <laughs> I like to know what's going on at all, all moments and, you know, you have to relinquish some, some control when there's, you know, multiple practices and multiple things going on and, yeah, and, you know, bigger staff, which that's a lot of women to manage some days. <laughs> um, and I've learned that one, the hard and very fun way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'll definitely say that um, HR related matters, uh, staffing and training staff, um, again, and not just training them and be able to to actually look back and make sure what you've trained someone someone on is actually being implemented is um, the one of the biggest things that I have challenges with. Um, the staff that I do have, um, all the office managers are fantastic, and they're you know like mini versions of me basically. They're like my eyes and ears all the time, but they're still not me obviously. So there's always going to be something, you know, I hate those Monday morning text messages or whatever, um, sick or, you know, like those, those type of issues are really frustrating. And I've recently taken that on again, because I used to have a general manager who I have um, recently moved on from, we let her go, um, just because it wasn't working the way uh, I had wanted it to work and she just wasn't sharing the vision. So for me, it's definitely HR staffing and setting the right expectations for staff and having that be a continuum and not just be a day when they see my face, basically. Adding on to that, I think sometimes um, one office will compare themselves to another office. And that can cause a little bit of stress, I think, you know, HR wise. Um, it's, uh, 
definitely a challenge. I, I have more challenges streamlining everything. And then some of our patients go between each of the offices and we don't have a streamlined practice management software system. Um, we can log on and it just takes time to pull things up. And sometimes you can't remember things and it's a little confusing sometimes. Well, that um, brings us to the next question Nicole has, is how do you coordinate computer software between offices? And do you use cloud-based software so you can see what's going on between offices? We use oh. cloud-based and mm -hmm. love it. We use Curve. Um, we have a lot of patients that bounce back and forth, like um, between the two locations, they're close enough that people um, will kind of go wherever there's an opening or whatever's most convenient. So the cloud-based software is really nice to have. So we're cloud-based as well. Um, big goal for 2019 was to implement cloud-based in all three of the offices. And we just, we, I mean, we finished that. It's been about um, six months since we've, we've had all, all three offices on cloud-based. And I feel like it's a total game changer, the fluidity and everything of that is um is amazing just to be able to pick up where you left off or you know um you know obviously there's there's definitely some the kinks that need to be worked out anytime you're using a new software but the kinks have been ironed out pretty quickly probably within the first few weeks and it's it's been smooth sailing um uh, to dr janice's point yes it is very if the software isn't streamlined and if it's not super fluid. I mean, it's not only taking time out of your staff and your own schedule to bounce information back and forth. Um, we try not to have patients go back and forth, but it inevitably is going to happen. Um, but uh, the cloud-based software has been like amazing imaging as well, like being able to pull up a radiograph from anywhere, anytime, especially on a long weekend, like Thanksgiving, for example. <laughs> when somebody always seems to have a problem that it had been going on for months before and they just never did anything. Um, so it's, it's so helpful between three offices. You're not going to remember every detail just to be able to pick up where, where you left off is great. And our situation is a little bit different since we have, you know, two different client bases and we have two different softwares. We have had EagleSoft um, at our fee for service office as long as I can remember since at least 2003 and when we started um, Rainbow Smiles we did it on a very shoestring budget um, we had three extra chairs um, that we moved over there and we just did everything and on just a very tight budget um, and we went with Easy Dental and we are currently in the process of upgrading to Dentrix um, mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, I'm a Dentrix user myself. Um, I love it. And um, I'm not on cloud, but we have portals. So we can open up our computers and portal and port into the other office. Um, and I can also, I use um, Practice My Numbers. And it's a dashboard that pulls um, all the data that I need. So I can pull it up from any anywhere. I could be at home, I could be on vacation, and I can just pull up my dashboard and I can see, keep track of like all the numbers and all my KPIs, um, which has been really helpful because um, I used to have my staff run my Google spreadsheets and type in all my KPIs. But with that, there's human error. They can type things wrong or they can, you know, mess up the Excel spreadsheet and like the formulas. Um, so having a dashboard has really been helpful so that it um, decreases human error and I can pull up accurate numbers for my reports. Um, so I don't, do you guys use anything like that? We did. Can I actually share? Um, I'm going to I'm in my office. I'm just going to, don't laugh. This is what our thing used to look like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like six computer screens, two for each office, just kind of like uploading at like, you know, in real time. And it was just a little bit of madness. And now that we're on Dentrix Ascend, we can dismantle this PSI <laughs> looking <laughs> set of <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, so flipping to the other question, 
my it is what do you find the most rewarding about owning multiple locations besides sharing staff it the passive income um we're gonna try to open another one this year and i would i if i could open two more i wouldn't practice dentistry anymore i would just be with my kids i, I never wanted to be a stay-at-home mom I always wanted, I mean, I love dentistry and I love my children. And it's so much easier to be a dentist than it is to be a mom. Um, but <laughs> the older they get, like, I just feel like I want to be there more. Um, but with five kids and five college educations, you got to have some income. Mm -hmm. So um, sure. that, that's my end goal. Anybody else? So the, the most rewarding thing for me, I mean, it's, it's been five years since I started this journey. Um, I mean, it's just seeing what's being built at the end of the day. I mean, you know, I went from like just me and like the fly on the wall in the first office with <laughs> operatories and no butts in the chair. And now we're, we're at a staff of 17 and there's five doctors and it's, it's really rewarding to see things grow and, and, um, individual like Lego pieces actually turn into a structure of some sort. And um, uh, I can't wait to see where it takes me. I don't know if three will be me. Maybe there's more. I'm not quite sure. But um, from where I sit right now, if it, if it grows at, you know, things move at, at the pace that they've been moving, then absolutely I can see, as Dr. Misty said, um, spending less time doing clinical dentistry that's sort of everyday dentistry and maybe doing more things that I want to focus on almost, you know, um, just kind of hone in on a few skill sets that I want to do on a daily basis. Um, I don't want to do composite fillings forever. So <laughs> <laughs> really you don't. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Janice? Um, for me, clinically, I mean, I was practicing in my mothership office for about 10 years. And when you have the same patient pool, dentistry gets kind of boring. You know, it's your little class two filling. It's your replacement of a crown because it's got a little bit of recurrent decay. And it, it was kind of nice and refreshing um, having these two different practices um, that have different demographics. So I've got one that's more of a ger geriatric practice. And I have another one, which is a little bit more, um, Stockton is a challenging neighborhood. So you, you have to bring that slow round out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> Meg? Um, kind of the same thing. Like I, you know, even though they're only 30 minutes apart, the demographics of the two offices are quite different. And I love yanking out teeth like all day. So um, one of my, my more rural of the two offices has a lot of farmers that only go to the dentist when the crops are done and their teeth are bombed out and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of Amish, we have a lot of Amish patients and they're very interesting. Very cool. Um, Kim wants to know how many ops do you have per office and or how many did you start with? Three, five, and three. Both of mine have four, but um, one of my offices, we're actually building a new building right now and it's gonna have six, so. Five, three, and the one that was three now has five. And uh, five, five, four. Okay. Cool. Um, I have five and one, and the other one um, is seven. But again, I'm in peds, so peds is a little bit more like you know, well, you gotta have a lot of chairs. Um, what are your short and long-term goals for practice ownership? I think we kind of touched on this a little bit. Some of you guys did, but if anyone wants to add to it, um, if you have any goals for practice ownership. I have not a freaking clue. 
Um, <laughs> um, like, I mean, maybe the big dream uh, would, you know, if I acquired a third practice, I love, like I said, I love the blood. Um, I'm actually taking implant pathways here uh, next month. So it'd be cool just to like spend a day at each office and pull teeth and drop some implants, but we got a long ways to get there. So <laughs> it's so funny. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying it's funny because you're like, drop some implants. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I'm, I have weird Take teeth and drop implants. <laughs> <laughs> Cold steel and sunshine. It's the best description there is. I think it's a rural thing. Like, I take a lot of teeth out myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, all right. So, um, Okay, so this is not on the list. I just have a question for you guys. Um, you know, having shared in this experience of multiple, you know, practices and um, the joys and challenges of them, um, do you often think that having, like, some, do you often think, like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to go down to one? Never. I'm going up to three. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like five in the next couple of years. So, no. Janice? I do. I do. Yeah. I think about getting rid of one because sometimes I'm just tired of the commute between the three. Yeah. Um, and the other day, it's like, oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so, it's funny how we all think, you know, differently. Um, so, for those of you guys who have partners, um, or help, you know, I know that Misty, you have a partner, Janice, you, your husband's your, your partner. All right. Am I, well, is, that right? is, is your husband what? Your slave? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, He's my He's oh. okay you're your employee I, hopefully he's not there listening um and meg do you have a partner i don't um i'm totally open to it um i don't know we're just you know I'm, i've only been doing this a year and a half so i don't want to jump into partnership before i kind of know exactly what i have but um mm -hmm. it's definitely something i would be open to in the future Mm -hmm. And Priya? Um, I'm not closed off to partnership, but I can't, I mean, I, it would have to take like the perfect partnership because um, not only would you have to understand the, the practice model, but you'd have to have the same goals. And I don't, it, I don't know that it would be super easy to, to find that at this stage. So Right now, if you ask me if I would partner with someone today, the answer is no, but um, I'm not closed off to it at all. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this makes sense, but I think like if I had to imagine myself as a solo person and happen to take on a partner, that thought doesn't appeal to me. I think it would be easier going into a partnership. If, does that make sense? Like he was already there, already knew him. I had worked with him for three years. Um, and so that was, I was excited to do it. Um, if I had not had a partner and was, was opening up to, to a partnership idea, I think that idea would probably scare me more. Sure. Um, and we, we have a, a great relationship. There's lots of times we don't agree um, on things, but it's, you know, it's always worked out. Yeah, I think that totally makes sense. You know, if you have someone from the get go and start together mm -hmm. um, in a partnership, but I think that, if you're already up and running, maybe sometimes it's harder or it, I guess it's just the fear of the unknown, but having that well, trust factor. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we all, I'm very controlling. You have a lot of controlling tendencies. This is what we <laughs> probably all do. And he's very, he's much more laid back than I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's been very helpful. That's awesome. If there's one thing that you had to give up in your daily duties, what would it be? Payroll. <laughs> um, see, I do payroll. I, like, I don't mind doing payroll. But I also married my accountant. <laughs> Perfect. And he showed me how to do payroll so much easier. He saw me do it one night. He's like, What are you doing? You are making this ridiculously hard. And it used to take me about two hours, and now I can do both offices. 
I have with you guys, um, in about 40 minutes. Misty, I can't hear you. You said something about 40 minutes. I can do both office payrolls in about 40 minutes. That is fast. Yes. It's, he, he's like, you're doing this the wrong way. <laughs> Maybe he needs to do a webinar for us. <laughs> Y'all would laugh at his accent. <laughs> it's okay. I have a terrible Chicago accent. <laughs> so what else besides payroll? I'd love to give up HR stuff. Like if people would just come to me for the dentistry things, that'd be awesome. I don't want to hear that so-and-so was on their cell phone and it made you feel bad. I don't know. I just don't <laughs> like it. Um, no, I totally get it. I mean, it's all about like your assistants, your staff, your managers, and who, who does what responsibilities and stuff. And um, one thing that I like doing with my one thing that I would not give up that I like, actually, this is like the opposite of the question I asked. Um, I like coaching my associate doctors. Um, I really like that part. I love the camaraderie that we have. I love bouncing ideas off of each other, sharing x-rays, um, even coaching them with assistants. Like if they like clashed or like but heads with, you know, an assistant had a bad day, you know, I can get on the phone with them and walk them through that. Um, so I feel like that maybe that's like mentoring in a way. Um, so I like the mentoring of my associates and, um, not that, not that, uh, I'm the one mentoring all the time. I feel like they mentor me too. So it's definitely a give and take in that regard. So I do like that. But if I had to give up one thing, um, as an owner of two practices, I wish I had like my own, like chauffeur, <laughs> Like, I hate commuting. I hate driving. You know, that to me is the hard part. So if I had a chauffeur, like my own personal Uber, that would drive me everywhere. Well, you could work. You could do paperwork while somebody else drove you. So you would actually be you know, increasing your production. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that thinking, Misty. Ask your husband if I can write that off. <laughs> <laughs> he said sounds good to him <laughs> all right <laughs> that sounds good that'll generate more income to pay for a driver <laughs> oh my gosh i think you know you're i mean dion well he, like the longer i've been practicing i just not that i i don't get as upset about the little things anymore like hr related mm -hmm. um it's hard when you got a lot of women that work for you and you know, women, I, I tell my partner all the time, I'm like women are crazy and I apologize. Um, but I just, a lot of it, I just let go and let them work it out on their own and just, I just don't sweat that small stuff anymore. I just listen to them. I'm like, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Someone's going to cry. Someone's going to cry. A, con a closed door conversation definitely leads to open door of tears. Oh, I wish we had choirs. We have yellers. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Um, okay. So I am going to ask another question. Um, I know that everyone seems to have, like, a really different background as far as, like, how they got into owning practices. But this is totally random um, question is like one of my visions of Ranger, and I have no idea how this would even be implemented or even like come to fruition. But one thing I want to figure out maybe in the future is how to like, it'd be awesome if somehow we could connect all the ended practice owners in a way and could share like not share employees, but share in the overhead, share in like supplies and like build some kind of like partner organization, not a, not a DSO, but like everyone owns their own practices, but somehow like finding associates, like being able to find them in house and like stuff like that. And I don't even know if I'm really even saying it right, but pulling resources to get together as 
mommy dentist in business and having like, oh, like even if we were, you know, in our own little region and having like, okay, well, if you need an associate, we can share one and it not be a conflict of interest type of thing. Does that even make sense? Yeah. 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 So do you mean using the, you know, if you, if you have a problem solving a particular problem using your practices or the collective group practices as a model for how you're creating the solution and eventually have it be available to everyone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And definitely. I think about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, just to make our lives easier, I just feel like there's got to be a way to bring resources together Mm -hmm. um, so that we can all like benefit. Um, And even if it that if that means like training and having like a dental assisting school at some point, or like our own temp agency at some point or something like that, like covering maternity leaves. And yeah, maternity leave. I was just about to say that, like, if anyone's available in May, hit me up. (laughs) <laughs> right that I'm just like it just seems like so many people are like um licensed in multiple states and and like even in the group there just seems to be such a wide variety of experience levels I should say like some women are like closer to retirement some women are like in like I never want to be an owner I would rather just associate and like I can go from office to office there's even a doctor I think Stephanie Bodnard. I don't know how to say her last name, but she's like local tenants. Um, and she's like licensed in multiple states and she goes around covers people's maternity leaves. Um, I just think that that would be like a really neat way to, to go. So if anyone has any ideas, feel free to share. Yeah. I mean, I could see that happening. Like you said, with locum ten more, more from, from like a doctor perspective, because I feel like no matter um, how different uh, age demographic, practice demographic, any of that, there's still a common thread between all of us MDibs. And it would be, I mean, amazing to, to have had a maternity leave covered and not have to start thinking about it when you're like three months pregnant. Right. <laughs> Right. They did both times. So, right. Um, yeah. And Nicole, Nicole says front office personnel training, personnel training. We all need trained front desk people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we're all smart enough to maybe have to figure this one out, but that's something that would be so cool in the next like five years to be able to do. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything else to add. No. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys for being on this webinar um, and sharing your, your information, sharing your story and sharing um, your one hour of your time. Sorry to bother you on vacation. This year. <laughs> Where are you? I am in Philadelphia and we're going to go to DC tomorrow um, and then fly back out of Philadelphia on Saturday. Very cool. Well, thanks for taking the time, everyone. And um, again, I just want to say thanks to our sponsor, Green Sky Solutions. And uh, this webinar um, wasn't eligible for CE because of the content. So I just wanted to point that out. But our last webinar for the year is next week, and it is eligible for CE. So join us live if you would like to um, get CE. And we do now have self-study CE available. Um, so we kind of decided to take that you know, on ourselves. Um, we don't have like a software company that we're using. Um, we just have to do it in-house. So Alicia and Eden are managing that. So if you guys want to take some um, CE for self-study, you can, and that's on our website and that's it. All right. Have a good night, ladies. Green Sky Patient Solutions helps dental providers grow their business while helping their patients get the optimal care that they need. By offering revolving credit and installment loan platforms, Green Sky can meet your financing needs.